Thank you, Minister uh, Thor Darsson. Thank you, Ambassador Aina Gunnarsson. Uh, allow me in the first place to congratulate you with a very successful uh, Icelandic chairmanship, which has been realized in particular difficult circumstances. Minister, you highlighted particularly a major achievement, uh, a success of your chairmanship, is the ministerial declaration, plus also the strategic plan. And Eina, you mentioned the concrete achievements which were based on the four priorities of your chairmanship. And as you said at, at the end, a lot has been achieved, and particularly because of the really unique uh, Arctic cooperation uh, spirit. So, um, before uh, asking uh, the audience for, for questions, allow me uh, to start off a question to you, uh, Minister. Uh, what has been the major challenge of your Arctic chairmanship? I'm not speaking uh, so much about the COVID uh, challenge, which has been affected everybody, uh, but particularly, I would say, the major challenge also in the geo geopolitical field. Well, uh when we, we were, uh, when I was uh, thinking about uh, sitting up on the states and uh, reflecting on uh, the memories uh, for that time, then of course comes up in mind that more or less everyone told us when we took over that this would be a difficult task. And uh, I said at the time, and I said it uh, in my in my speech, this was not probably it was the the, the most difficult time to take over. Uh, chairmanship of the Arctic Council. And the reason is that there was a, could say, tension in the air. And we saw that in Rowanemi. And people were just worried that this wouldn't be functional in the next two years. And I think that was probably the, probably the biggest challenge was that uh, to get things in a way it then turned out to be. But uh, to be all fairness, then all uh, of, of the Arctic Council, uh, both countries and definitely observers, they were very true to uh, the course. So uh, was it a challenge? Yes, definitely. But uh, it worked out not only because we were there, because everyone wanted to see things happen. But then, of course, we are also facing these big challenges, uh, climate change and, and uh, other issues that uh, we have, uh, and Einar did mention in, in more details. But I think uh, if we take one thing out, is that just at that time when we took over, then uh, it wasn't certain that it would work like, like it did. And then and it was an, uh, then an extra, could you say, uh, I don't know if the bonus is the mm -hmm. right word, but uh, having the strategic plan was something that we, we always wanted to do, but we didn't really allow us to dream uh, definitely not at the, the beginning that it, it would happen, but it did, and uh, it shows commitment from uh, from uh, all stakeholders and shows. So we look at uh, not only optimism, just to look at the reality that we have uh, stakeholders and countries who are really engage in the course, and that is something that we should be very pleased and grateful for. But uh, there is a huge, huge task ahead of us. Thank you, Minister. But it worked out, and, and you are leaving a great legacy, uh, both of you. I will pass now the floor to the audience and uh, please raise your hands for questions, not all at the same time. <laughs> I can't see anybody. Can somebody who asks a question stand up? Yes, at the back. You get a microphone. Thank you. Um, uh, my name is Sarah Cox. I'm with the SDWG, the Arctic Council, and thoroughly enjoyed the chairmanship of, under Icelandic leadership, so congratulations. Um, there are a number of different challenges in the Arctic Council. One of them is that uh, we talk a lot about sort of motherhood statements. How do we involve youth, uh, gender equality? Very hard to execute, but uh, under the Icelandic chairmanship, the launch of an excellent gender equality project, a, a report. And I think that's precedent setting, frankly. The question now is how, one of the goals is to uh, sort of mainline gender equality throughout the Arctic Council. And the, the report came out under the Sustainable Development uh, Working Group. How do you do that? And can you use Icelandic uh, success in gender equality to continue to influence 
uh, the Arctic Council in this respect. Thanks. Excellent. Minister, gender equality also stressed by your Prime Minister yesterday. You have the floor. Yes, thank you. Uh, what we try to do when it comes to gender equality, all the things that we prioritize on, and uh, is that we are, well, I mean, some things we have done right, I stand this, and I think when it comes to gender equality, it's obviously one of them. And uh, we try to lead by an example. We try to uh, tell our story. Uh, to be honest, I think it says it all that you have no politician in Iceland, you have no political party in Iceland who wants to go back. Everyone agrees that what we have done when it comes to gender equality has been a success and it's good for everyone, both men and women. And that is something that we are just trying to uh, share with others. Uh, but uh, you mentioned also the youth, uh, and I think that when we are talking about the Arctic, uh, the best thing we can do is the, 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 the more you, young people meet each other in the Arctic countries, get to know each other, uh, understand each other, that is the best way forward. If we're going to take something out that we, we should emphasize on, then it's on youth. And uh, I find it remarkable, I found it remarkable to see how the working groups are working across border, across languages, uh, uh, in, in this huge area. It is, I, I think that's the basis of the success we are seeing. And we should do more, especially with the young people. Thank you, Minister. I have a question here in the front. Thank you for this. Uh, my name is Gisli Haldorsson. I'm a mayor of the municipality of Arborg. Related to this discussion, um, I think there is a great possibility for uh, a lot of uh, growth, sustainable growth, if we find ways to uh, to increase inclusiveness, so so that uh, we are not just trying to funnel, you know, money from big companies and big stakeholders, but try to involve the others to give uh, them a free space for uh, their creativity and potential. So, inclusion is that uh, a discussion in the? in the strategy, strategy making of uh, the Council. Minister, inclusiveness? Yes, well, uh, thank you. You mentioned it's not enough to uh, only take the big uh, companies and, and the big stakeholders. Well, I think that it's fair to say when it comes to Iceland, our view is always small is really important, for obvious reasons. But in all seriousness, then uh, one of the things that help us when working in the Arctic is that uh, we more or less all of us are uh, in Iceland, I could say all of us, and from mu small uh, municipalities. We come from uh, small communities. Well, Arctic is like that. And if we are going to achieve something, if we're going to uh, get the results we want to do, then everyone needs to be there, and especially these small communities. So uh, there again, we think that we have uh, some uh, experience to share but definitely at the same time, a lot to learn from the others who live in, in the Arctic. So the question, uh, the answer to the question is definitely yes. And uh, I think it cannot be overstated the importance of getting everyone involved, especially the uh, small communities, uh, the uh, small companies and, and uh, so on. Small is beautiful. Inclusiveness plays a role, uh, definitely. Equally, I would say, in the architecture of the Arctic Council, mm -hmm. where the inclusiveness, and particularly with an increase of interest mm -hmm. for non-Arctic states and many observers, that uh, inclusiveness is also there in the architecture of the Arctic Council mm -hmm. is, is important. I think I will have to close the discussion. Just maybe a last question to, to Eina, which is the recommendation you would give to your successor, to the Russian chairmanship? Well, uh, thank you, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Ambassador, for coming. And uh, uh, I think I could uh, relate that back to the question from Sarah Cox. You know, how can we work with this? And we believe very strongly that the strategic plan can actually be a tool for the inner workings of the Arctic Council. We hope to see that the working groups, the machinery of the Arctic Council I was referring to, will make use of the plan, like I say, bottom up. 
And in that respect, I could also relate that to, question, to the question from, from, from Gisli. Uh, yes, one of the goals, uh, goal number four, in fact, is focusing on sustainable social development. It is actually one of the goals that has more uh, strategic actions uh, linked up to it, and it is exactly focusing on these elements. And we hope to see the machinery of the Council make use of this when they are preparing their work plans going forward to strengthen the Council and strengthen the direction of the Council. So that is exactly, uh, we could see that, and, and if that happens, uh, I would be very happy for my successes of having made good use of what we believe is a very important step in the history of the Council. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister. Thank you very much, Ambassador Gunnarsson. Thank you.